where is the economy today? I think we cannot shy away from the fact that where is the economy today? There are, in all, I think there are 12 indicators that we looked at. Um, money supply growth is positive, growing but marginally, but it's also leading to inflationary pressures. Opening position of banks up 43% in, in August, and it's projected to go much higher. Allocation that was shared by the states came down from 821 billion in July to 714, and it's projected to go slightly lower in September. The Treasury bill rate has gone up from 10% to 11% for 90 days, and same that's amber. So the fact is down, that's red. Average NIBO rates have, is down, it's, that's in red as well. Average lending rates have come down for investment grade uh, customers by 3% to 18%, and it's likely to go slightly lower. Inflation has gone down from 11.23 to 11.14, but it's going to go back up when they announce it on Friday, I think, to 11.15, 11.16. Purchasing managers index has gone up significantly from 48 to 54. Why? Because people are buying for the Christmas, and also people are hedging against political risk because they think that anytime there's a run-up to election, people get nervous, so they're buying inventory. And also, there's a lot of pressure on the Naira since in the last one week we've seen a lot of that. Oil price is at 73 in August, but it's gone up to 78, and that's good news. Next slide. And oil production, green, power, green, GDP growth, green, but it came down to 1.5. We hope it goes. External reserves is red, exchange rate is amber, and stock market capitalization is the deep red. Of these slides, of these variables, 12 were green, I think five were, four were amber, and six were red. That's what, that just tells you where we are. So, the economy is going to be doing relatively well, but it's, most of the, the threats are getting more intense. And therefore, nobody should expect any miracles between now until after the elections. Okay? Now, what are the challenges? Power supply, the difference between, because they are not cost reflective tariffs, the difference between the cost of alternative power is almost three, four times that of public power. So it's better to have a higher tariff and stable power supply than have alternative power. And not only that, the damage that is done by the fluctuation is, is incalculable. MSM is, next slide, next, next. They make up 90% of all the firms in Nigeria. But again, numbers don't matter. It is a magnitude. Like Hitler said, a hundred fools cannot make a wise decision. That's his own definition of democracy, right? And a hundred zeros will give you zero. So again, so 90% of all firms accounts for 50% of GDP employs 60 million people, employment elasticity is there, and largely in trade. Trade, wholesale and retail trade constitute about 15% of our GDP. And these guys are borrowing at about three or 4% per month. In other words, they are borrowing at about 48%, some of them 48% a year. So, and the way to understand it is that if my cost of borrowing is 48% a year, then I add inflation because inflation brings me to zero. So the, I'm trying to compute how I must price my products, right? So let us assume inflation at that time was 15% a year or two ago. So add 15% to the 48%, right? So 50 plus. So 65% margin brings me to zero. Then for me to have an internal rate of return of about 20% to 20 so I need to price my product at about 85 to 90% above my cost. If not, 
And don't forget, 38% of the population are entrepreneurial. They are economic agents. They are very rational, and they are, in fact, if you go to the market, the way we do it, when we go and do inflation surveys, I tell them, don't go in the morning. Don't go at 8, 9, go at 11. They say, why? I said, when you go to the market at 8 or 9, the owner of the store is not there. The girl who is there, who her mother has told, will give her a price range. And what she will do is to give you a price higher than that price. Because her mother will, you know, thank her for selling well. So if you want to know the real price, go when the owner of the store is there, who looks at you and says, okay, that's what it is. So when you do the price survey at 8, 9 in the morning, do the price survey at 11, and do the price survey at 5 in the afternoon when the price of tomatoes has crashed, because that time they, they don't want to take it home. You come up with different outcomes. So the entrepreneurial spirit is there, is driving, is burning in them, and we, f we see it all the time. And when we go to Sura market, and when we go to Igbo market, and when we go to Edo, we, c we get different outcomes, right? But then we do the analysis and synthesis to come up with results. So these guys are many, they are smart, they are much smarter than you, infinitely smarter than you, okay? And they employ a lot of people. And no matter as many as there are, you know, in economics, we say many buyers, many sellers, perfect market. Don't be fooled by that rubbish. Those markets are cabals. If you try to buy from one person and he says no, or they, they will send somebody after you until they fix the price and that's it. You, you either buy at that price or you go. And yet, in economics, we say, oh, boy, they used to tell us, is it, Entry, this homogeneous community, you know, perfect information. There ain't, ain't no such thing, you know. So, <laughs> so, so, what do we have? We have micro, we have small, we have medium, and we have all these things. But generally speaking, their turnover is quite significant. And when we try to do something for the office of the vice president, uh, Perfect, this presidential thing on ease of doing business. And we had to carry out um, surveys, Kano and Lagos. The outcomes were unbelievable. You know, first and foremost, they refuse to give you information because they don't know whether you're coming with a tax bill the next day. So you got to first relax. And then all of them have the, are you aware, the question is, are you aware that you can get your blah, blah, blah online? Are you aware that you can get your driving license? Question number one. Many of them say I'm not aware, but they are aware. If you are aware, do you believe? No, we don't believe in it. I still use an agent. So even if I've done everything online, I use an agent to go and get, because it, they've lost total confidence in the system. You do online, they'll come and tell you that your driving license has been waiting there for the past three months. But, so there is a problem of the, even when the government is providing incentives, the people, many of them are not aware. Those who are aware do not believe, and those who are aware and believe are going there just probably to write a petition, right? So. So there is a structural problem around the ecosystem that we deal with. And this, because all of these things lead to what we call an increased average cost. Because people produce where their marginal cost equals their marginal revenue. But the average cost of doing business is getting higher and higher. And that is what kills these businesses. That's why they don't survive more than four or five years of, and so on and so forth. And that's why they borrow so that they just price themselves accordingly. But if you look at the next slide, we'll tell you that there's the balance sheet of the central bank, which is an important thing. It's 30 trillion naira, which is now 20% of GDP. It used to be much higher. The rule of the thumb is that when the balance sheet of a central bank of a country 
is more than 25% of the GDP, like, then that central bank is not in a position to intervene in a system. It's dangerous. But if it's at this level, they still have the capacity to, but, you know, it means that you need to be working out resolution systems which are not widespread because it would destabilize the system completely. So it's always important to see the size of the balance sheet of the central bank relative to the size of the GDP. But if you look at MS, MSME's growth and credit to the private sector, credit to the private sector is actually declining. And growth to the MSMEs is was declining at the same time as and now has started picking up. So, why is this happening? And we've asked many of them, why do SMEs, MSMEs, MSMEs fail? One is most important is governance, then finance. When the finance is broken into expensive finance, but more than anything else, devaluation and adjustment of currency values. Cross-border risk, because there's such a high import content. The marginal propensity to import in Nigeria is 63.63, which means that every time, everything you consume, 63% of it has an import content, even though you deceive yourself that you have, the flour is made, the wheat is imported 100% and you mill it. So that means that whenever the currency adjusts, you are affected. As a matter of fact, the country is more exchange rate sensitive than it is interest rate sensitive. 